Hey, my name is Danica, and today I have my October wrap-up. I feel like I hadn't read much in October, but looking back I actually did okay. I've just been distracted this month because in a couple of days I'm going to New York for Book Riot Live, which I'm really excited about, and also just a little bit terrified. It'll be my first time in New York, and also I'm just stupendously bad with directions, so we'll see how it goes. If you're in New York or nearby, you should really consider going to Book Riot Live. It's going to be so much fun, if just for all the amazing people that are going to be there. Book Riot people are some of my favorites. They're so smart and feminist and hilarious, so you should definitely check it out if you can. The first book I finished in October was Under the Odala Trees by Chinello Ocaranta. I'll link my review at the Lesbury down below because I don't know how well I'll be able to concisely talk about this book. This is set in Nigeria and it's basically a coming out story. It kind of reminded me of lesbian coming out stories from like the 70s in North America just because it has a really bleak tone. But then I realized that it's ridiculous to think of this as somehow outdated when the afterword explains that Nigeria is one of the most religious countries in the world. In 2014 they passed legislation that in some areas makes homosexuality criminalized to the point where the punishment is death by stoning. So it's not a light read, but I think it's a good one to get more of a global perspective on being queer and how it's not the same in all parts of the world. Next I listened to the audiobook of Melting Stones by Tamara Pierce. This is in the Emelon universe. I liked this one a lot more than the Battle Magic audiobook I listened to beforehand, and I think part of that is that I got the full cast audio, and that really made it a lot more entertaining to listen to. And also I just really like Evie as a character, it's really her story in this book. So I thought it still wasn't as good as her other Emelon books, I think. Maybe it's just because I listened to it as an audiobook. Maybe I would have liked it better as a physical book. It was still good. After that, I read Between the World and Me by ta Coates. This one has gotten tons of attention. It's basically just a father writing to his son about primarily race relations in the U.S., being black in the United States. This is a really thoughtful, kind of philosophical book. It actually made me miss being in school because this would be such a great book to discuss with a lot of people, to really pull apart and look at it in depth. It's such a small book, but there's so much in it. I would definitely recommend this for really anyone, but especially if you live in the U.S. And I picked up Snapshots of a Girl by Belden Sezen. This is a graphic memoir, and I love graphic memoirs, especially lesbian graphic memoirs, so this was bound to be a success. It's about coming out as a lesbian in a Turkish family. I really liked how it explores different styles throughout the book. There's one scene near the beginning that I just thought was amazing and hilarious. It's about her before she's come out, before she's even really come out to herself. She ends up sleeping with another woman for the first time, and kind of in the middle of it, she just gets totally overwhelmed and just gets up, gets dressed, leaves without saying anything, drives off, and just doesn't consider her sexuality again for years. It's just the most, like, nope. No reaction, and I love that. And then because I'm going to New York and I'm really excited about it, I picked up Open City by Teju Cole. This is basically about a guy just wandering the streets of New York and contemplating his life. This is another kind of philosophical, thoughtful book. It also has to do with being black in the U.S. and also being African in the U.S., but it covers a lot of different topics. I was enjoying this book. I wasn't loving it, but I was liking it, and then I got to the end, and spoilers, there's this bizarre passage where a woman that he hasn't seen for years accuses him of raping her years ago, and that is just not really addressed at all, and, you know, it's swept past, and I didn't really know how to incorporate that into the story. I don't know if you're supposed to hate this guy or if you're not supposed to believe her. That definitely soured the story for me. And then there was Dewey's 24-hour readathon. I had a video where I do kind of hourly updates, which was fun to make. For the October readathon, I like to do sort of Halloween-themed reads. So the first one that I picked up was Out by Natsuo Carino. This is a story about a woman who murders her abusive, terrible husband 
and then gets her friends who work with her on an assembly line to help cover up the murder and hide the body. I thought this was a really fascinating book. It's so misanthropic. I felt like the central concept of the book was that men are terrible and women are not a lot better. I actually was really enjoying this one again until the ending. And the ending is like appropriately dramatic. It makes sense in the context of the book, but I don't really get the message it was trying to convey. It threw me for a loop because it seemed really contradictory, and I don't know if I'm just not understanding the book properly. This is one that I would like to talk to people about who have read the book because I just didn't really get what that was supposed to mean. I will also definitely say there are some trigger warnings on this book for, in addition to violence and murder and gore, really graphic rape scenes, so do be aware of that going in. The other Halloween-themed book I picked up after that was The Girl from the Well by Rin Chipeco, and this was pretty much exactly what I was looking for for an October readathon book. It's a teen horror book about a spirit who kills child murderers, and then she ends up kind of tangled up with this teenage boy who has another murderous spirit sort of following him around and the story of what happened there. This was a great, quick, creepy read, and I also appreciated that the ending was not what I was expecting, but it made total sense. I thought this was a great Halloween read. And the last book I finished in October was The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms, which is Inheritance Book One by N.K. Jemisin. N.K. Jemisin is going to be at Book Riot Live, and I have heard amazing things about this series, including from Mark of Mark Reads, so I definitely wanted to pick it up before I went to Book Riot Live. This is a fantasy series about a woman who finds herself thrown into this backstabbing world of court politics, and is just trying to survive. But in addition to that, there are fallen gods that she gets involved with that may save her or they may just kill her on a whim, so there's that aspect. This was so different from other fantasy books that I've read, just the world building was really impressive. And I love the writing style that sometimes interrupts itself and has different threads going, which makes a lot of sense once you figure out the context of the story. I'll definitely be picking up the next one in the series, but I was pleasantly surprised to find that this book actually works pretty well as a standalone. It has a really satisfying ending that brings it all together, and the next book in the series is from a different character's perspective. Those were all the books that I've read in October. Let me know if you've read any of these and what you've thought of them, and if you have an October wrap-up, feel free to link it down below and I'll definitely check it out. Let me know if I'll be seeing any of you on the 7th and 8th of Book Riot Live, and thank you for watching. Bye.